The Lord granted him a stern struggle, that he might know the wisdom is mightier than all else. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, our Father, who conferred upon your servant, Blessed Miguel Augustine Pro, the grace of ardently seeking your greater glory and the salvation of others, grant through his intercession and example that by faithfully and joyfully performing our daily duties and effectively assisting those around us, we may serve you with zeal and ever seek your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked, and there was the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. I heard a sound from heaven, like a sound of rushing water or a loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard was like that of a harpist playing their harps. There was singing what seemed to be a new hymn before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders. No one can learn this hymn except the 144,000 who had been ransomed from the earth. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. They have been ransomed as the first fruits of the human race for God and the Lamb. On their lips, no deceit has been found. They are unblemished. The word of the Lord. Lord, this is the place that the people that longs to see your face. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. know when the Son of Man will come. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus looked up and saw some wealthy people putting their offerings into the treasury, and he noticed a poor widow putting in two small coins, He said, I tell you truly, this poor widow put in more than all the rest, 
for those who have all made offerings from their surplus wealth. But she, from her poverty, has offered her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. I like to tell the story of a chicken and a pig walking down the street and they see a man starving. And so the chicken says to the pig, let's feed the fella. And the pig says, what do you have in mind? He says, well, let's make him some breakfast. He says, well, what do you want to make him? And the chicken says, well, let's cook him up some bacon and eggs. To which the pig looked at the chicken and said, that's easy for you to say. For you, it's just a donation. For me, it's a life commitment. I like to tell that story to young people who are discerning their vocation to priesthood or religious life, and I tell them, God wants the bacon. <laughs> we know God loves bacon because Jesus came, gave his life for us, and got it, did away with the old law, and so we can now have bacon. So I always say it's part of the reason for the redemption was so we could have bacon, the candy of all meats. Today in the gospel, we have this woman giving her all. She's not making a donation of her life in the greatness of her poverty. She's giving the bacon. She's giving everything she has, the two small coins that she has to live on, she's putting in the basket. And our Lord says that she's putting in more than everybody else. Sure, they might be giving a thousand coins, but in their bank account, they have thousands of coins, tens of thousands of coins. This poor woman had two, and she's giving her all. Now, this is not a please give money to the basket homily, because it's more than just about money. When God calls us into relationship, he's not asking us simply for a donation of our time, when it comes to prayer, when it comes to our commitment of faith. He's not looking just for the donation of our times, our talents, and our treasure. He's looking for us. He wants the self-gift of ourselves to him. He wants us all, the whole of us, our whole person, everything of who we are, our mind, our heart, our soul, our strength. Isn't that the commandment? It's not love the Lord your God with part of your mind, part of your heart, part of your strength, part of your will. The commandment is love the Lord your God with your whole heart, whole mind, whole strength, whole heart. The Lord doesn't want half measures from us in the gifting of ourselves, in the relationship. He doesn't just want a friend who's going to text him once a week or a couple of times a day. He wants an intimate relationship with us. He seeks for us in relationship with him to make this beautiful gift of ourselves to him as he makes of himself a beautiful gift to us. In reflecting on the Eucharist, St. Francis would say, hold back nothing for yourself or of yourself. Give yourself totally to him so that he who gives himself totally to you may receive you Totally. St. Francis loved the word totally. He would have been very good in the 80s. Totally, dude. Right? This total gift of self. Holding back nothing of oneself or for oneself. That's not just for priests and religious, which of course we do it in a distinct way in the gifting of our lives of living celibacy or chastity, in obedience and so forth. But each of us in our personal spiritual lives make the full gift of ourselves to the Lord. And we live that out by the transformation of our lives. Not just the conversion away from committing mortal sins. Not just the conversion away from committing venial sins. But the conversion of the heart that seeks to live a life of authentic and true virtue. To live heroically faith. Hope, charity, prudence, temperance, justice, fortitude, to live it heroically. We know that relationship takes work. 
We know that relationship takes the full gift of self to the other. We know that to make a good marriage work, both persons have to be giving themselves 100% to the other. You might remember this old phrase they used to say that marriage is 50-50? No, it's not. I remember a deacon saying that, talking about his marriage and saying, my marriage is not 50-50. He says marriage has to be 100% and 100%. It has to be the total gift of oneself to the other. Of course, in compromising, we talk about 50-50, but it has to be the 100%, 100% gift of oneself to the other. If one's only giving 50%, one's only giving half of oneself. The deacon went on to say that some days he could only give 75% and on those days his wife gives 125. <laughs> Which is beautiful because it's true, you make up for what's lacking in the other. And doesn't our Lord do that with us in the gift of this relationship? He gives us the capacity to be in relationship with him. He gives us that extra 100% that we need to be 100%. And the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit of piety, reverence, the gift of fear of the Lord, the gift of wisdom, knowledge, counsel, understanding, fortitude, he gives us the grace to be able to be 100% self-gift to him. So he does give that extra, not 25%, he gives the extra 100% to allow us to be 100% back gift to him in the relationship. Now for some people this means, life like myself, where I consecrate myself to the Lord as a priest, as a religious. For some people it's like my niece who right now is preparing to make her vows as a Franciscan sister, be a religious sister teacher, or my nephew is about to be ordained a diocesan priest. For some of us, it means that total self-gift of that life, but for each of us in our personal lives, it's that gifting of ourselves to the Lord and the personal relationship in building a life of prayer and intimate union with God. Today, we celebrate a monk, St. Columban, who gave his life completely 100%, gave those two cents that he had, those two coins, and gave it all to the Lord, but also two wonderful martyrs, St. Clement, the second pope. You know, his writings were so beautiful that they often, they were, they were considered whether or not they were going to make it part of scripture. That's how beautiful his writings were. It was debated at one of the church councils at Chalcedon to say, to ask whether or not his writings were inspired by God and should be part of scripture. It was decided it wasn't. But Pope Clement gave his life for Christ, our second pope laid his life down, giving his all, spilling his blood for the Lord. And it would be almost 1,900 years later where Miguel Pro in Mexico, as I mentioned yesterday's homily, stood there with arms outstretched, the first photograph homily, uh, uh, homily, first photograph martyrdom, staring down the barrel of a gun, cries out, Viva Cristo Rey. He was quite funny because you weren't allowed to celebrate public mass and you know, he was a typical Jesuit, and he was not going to let that deter him. He was the good old-fashioned Jesuit. And so he would do things. One day, he'd, he had to go anoint these people in, the, in an apartment building, and they, all the guards were outside looking for this priest, this rogue priest, and they were all, all the military men were dressed up, and he stole a uniform from one of the uh, commanding officers and dressed up as the commanding officer, walked, Gail saluted all, they saluted him, walked right past all of them, anointed who he had to anoint, and saluted them on the way out. Another day, his taxi was being chased by, by the police, and he was in the back, and he was dressed as a regular, regular clothes, and the taxi was getting chased, and he told the taxi driver, turn the corner, turn the corner, the guy turns the corner, and as he turns the corner real fast, Miguel Pro rolls out of the back door, right onto a park bench, sits down and puts his hat down, and the cops go right past him. It was a scene out of a movie. Another day he was walking down the street and he heard the cops behind him. He heard their boots and knew that his time was coming. So he, wa he noticed the girl walking in front of him was a parishioner. And so he walked up to put his arm around her and says, just pretend you're my girlfriend. She put his arm around him and the cops walked right by them. They think it was him. <laughs> he did all kinds of funny things like that. But eventually he gave the bacon. <laughs> he gave his life fully for Christ. These are beautiful examples, these martyrs, who tell us that it's Christ is worth dying for, that there is no greater glory than to die for Christ. There is no greater glory than to live one's life for Christ. 
There is nothing more beautiful than to take everything that's in the pocket and put it in the collection tray. And I don't mean your money or your time or your treasure, talents. Those are wonderful things to give. But the most important thing is the gift of the self, informing this beautiful gift of ourselves to Christ. What is martyrdom but a life gift to the Lord based on faith, rooted in love? What is the life of a Christian but the self-gift of oneself to the Lord, based in faith and rooted in love? May God bless you and Mary keep you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray. And by your grace may we be set afire with the flame of your love with which St. Miguel Pro overcame every bodily torment. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr Miguel Pro, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your nature, your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit. Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration 
that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Columban, St. Clement I, blessed Miguel Pro, St. James, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope, Benedict our Pope Emeritus, and Robert our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to it that passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever.
the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me, says the Lord. Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr Miguel Pro faithful in your service and victorious in suffering through Christ our Lord. Amen. I think I mentioned this before, but if you want to watch a good movie about, uh, they don't show Miguel Pro in it, but it's a fantastic movie about the martyrdoms of, and, the, and the sufferings in Mexico uh, during the, the fascist takeover by Calles' government. Uh, the movie is called For Greater Glory. For Greater Glory. It's a fantastic movie uh, about the faith. Uh, memory of Peter O'Toole. He's in it. He plays, a, um, he plays one of the priests who gets martyred at the very beginning, St. Cristobal. So it tells the story of St. Cristobal, San Anacleto, as well as uh, the, the star really is Blessed um, Jose Maria uh, Sanchez. It's an uh, incredible, incredible film about those who laid down their lives for the faith. And, um, it's a story of faith. Beautiful movie. Uh, have a beautiful day. Enjoy the liquid sunshine out there. And, uh, and so uh, we, we thank God for the gift of our little singer. So would that would be the problem in every Catholic church that we hear children playing during Mass. If only that were our problem. <laughs> may, may he multiply a thousand times in the church. <laughs> so no distraction there. It just adds to the prayer. Have yourselves an absolutely beautiful day. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Say, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls, Amen.